A warm welcome to yet another edition of the program, The Maze. I am Rosemary Ukokotega. On The Maze every week, we bring you a summary of all that transpire on the floor of the two chambers of the National Assembly. Now, should you miss the daily proceedings on the floor, just watch The Maze every Friday at this time. We have it all compressed here. Topping today's menu. Suspension of Senator Rova budget padding allegation. House resolves to investigate arbitrary cement price increase. For details of these and others, just stick around while I take a quick breather. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages, and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry, and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage, and if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity, our strength is not in our numbers but in our unity because even the weak become strong when united nigeria unite this message is brought to you by abuja broadcasting corporation owners and operators of aso radio 93.5 fm abuja aso television dstv channel 392 Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. This is The Maze on Aso Television. We are live on DSTV 392, Star Times TV 127, Free TV 507, UHF Band 38. Our takeoff today is the Red Chamber, and top proceeding was the suspension of Senator Abdul Ningi over allegations of 3.7 trillion naira padding of the 2024 budget. The day session at the Red Chamber soon became modelled as lawmakers deliberate on the allegations made by the lawmaker after a motion was brought on the floor by the Chairman Senate Committee on Appropriation, Solomon Olamilekun. The real trouble started for Senator Ningi when a member of the Appropriation Committee in the Senate, Jimo Ibrahim, moved for his 12 months suspension. The motion was, however, amended and the suspension reduced to three months. Now, the embattled senator did not waste time after the suspension pronouncement by President of the Senate, Goswil Akbario. He tendered his resignation immediately as chairman of the Northern Senators Forum. Well, not just Senator Ningi, who got served. Another senator representing Kano South, Senator Kau Smiler, got off with a warning. Time now for a replay of the day on the floor of the Red Legislative Chamber. Now the motion has been moved. That this motion be taken under the Committee of the Whole, and thereafter the Senate President should report progress. Those in support that we proceed to resolve into committee of the whole to consider the motion and thereafter report progress. Say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. So we we'll resolve into committee of the whole. Let me present the motion, then I will explain. Ah, uh, urgent need to address 
the false allegation against the Senate and the Presidency on the 2024 Appropriation Act by Senator Abdul Ningi, representing Bauchi Central. The Senate notes that the following the presentation of the 2024 Appropriation Bill of 27.503 by the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, to the joint sitting of the Senate and the House of Representatives on Wednesday, the 29th of November, 2023. And following the debate of the general principle of the bill, at the second reading from Thursday, the 30th November, to Friday, 1st December, 2023, the bill was committed to the Committee on Appropriation for further legislative action, and in which Senator Abdul Ningi is a member of the committee. Also note, that to attain the January December budget cycle, the subcommittee submitted the harmonized report to the Committee of Appropriation and the report of the Committee on Appropriation submitted to the Senate and was unanimously passed on Saturday, the 30th of December 2023, and a budget of 28.77 trillion was assented to by the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, on 1st of January 2024 accordingly resolved. One, pursuant to Order 1B of the Senate Standing Rule 2023 as amended, allow the immediate deliberation of this matter and take appropriate action deemed fit in the overriding public interest as a matter of urgent importance to prevent further breakdown of law and order. Two, take further necessary steps to correct the wrong impression in the public domain of 2024 appropriation budget created by the BBC interview and other national social media houses and social media platform by Senator Abdul Ningi and amplified by Senator Suleiman Abdurrahman Kau through his Facebook account and other social media platform. Three, take any further decision as the Senate deemed fit and, pro and proper safeguard the integrity of the 2024 budget, which is the pivotal to the revamping of the economy. Mr. President, very distinguished colleague, I so submit. I so move. Yes. Distinguished uh, Senator Joe, it's not for me, it's for you to discuss. I want to state clearly that I am an unbiased umpire. I have no voice, I have no say. The decision is yours. Mr. President, I come under this order because fair hearing is a fundamental human right enshrined in our Constitution. Allegations have been made against Senator Abdul Lingi. I think it's only fair for us to give him time or to give him chance to defend himself before this August body. I want to do it now and here. And I have the document. I have the document. Finish. I, I, I want. To, I also have a point of order raised by Senate leader. Uh, this, we cannot suddenly turn the Senate into a market. Uh, the same with Senator Aleru, we give you respect, not just as a ranking senator, but as an elder statesman. So, if you stopped talking while you have the floor. And then you allow Senator Ningi to jump up and start shouting. That's not the behavior of the Senate. This place is not, this is not, this is not a rise television or BBC house service. So I would like a situation where you speak. If Senator Ningi wants to say something, I will grant him the opportunity. And he will say something. But we must, we must conduct ourselves with decorum and respect for one another. And particularly respect for this institution. So if you are true, 
And any other person who wants to talk, the person should raise his hand, I'll recognize you. Here from Senator Ninki. Mr. President, from the onset, let me concur to about 80% of the translation read out by Senator Yai. I think they have done a fair job, except on some issues that they could not understand. First, I have never said somebody was blinded. Secondly, I have never said the budget was flooded. Mr. Chairman, the beginning of this brahaha started with this text and Senator Abdul Lingi, Chairman Northern Senators Forum, is purported to be the author of this document, of this. Let me, for the avoidance of doubt, I have never issued out a statement of this nature to anybody, anywhere, and any time. In between the 28 point something trillion and the 25 trillion, we have discovered that there is no nexus. There is no nexus. Nexus means there is no amount of money to a location. There is no amount of money to a location. And I said, work is in progress. The tapes are there. I said the National Assemblies have powers. And you cannot call that powers padding. And I said I'm very grateful to the presidential spokesman who encountering me said the National Assembly added 1.27 trillion. And I was very clear. I was not aware of the addition. I was not even aware as I'm seated here of the full budget of the National Assembly. Mr. President, please, 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 can you allow me to? Mr. President, perusing through the budget, first, we discover sabungos anomalies of repetition, we discovered some senatorial districts in this particular document, some senatorial districts have up to 120 billion, and my senatorial district has just 2 billion. Mr. President, yes. Mr. President, in this budget, in this budget, diary presented to you, I have facts, constituency by constituency. Some, 120 billion. Some. 50 billion, some 30 billion. Mr. President, some have less than 1 billion. Mr. President, as I speak to you, I, Mr. President, as I speak to you, I do not know your take home pay. You know my own. I do not know the take home pays of any of the principal officers. Mr. President, as I speak, I know within the budgetary provisions you made available funds for purchase of cars. Mr. President, I don't know how much, how much you are spent on your cars and the other principal officers. I know how much was spent on individuals, senators' cars. And as I speak to you here, standing, 
People are calling me names. I do not receive a single car. All within, all within the budget provisions, Mr. Chairman. All within the budget provisions. I have. I have. I have, as a matter of fact, I have five eggs, just like every member of the House of Representatives has five. Mr. President, I do not know the number of your eggs. I do not know the number of the eggs of the Deputy Senate President. You allow me to speculate. And therefore, everything, everything that is in the budget is my concern. Mr. President, finally, I challenge everything. Who think our budget has passed is perfect. You call me for investigation. I want Nigerians to know that what the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tunibu, presented to us in a joint sitting, end of November 2023, for consideration was 27.5 trillion. So at no, at no time did the President present 25 trillion. Now, the Presidency has even come to clarify that. And if there is any addition, to the budget, it's in the sum of 1.2 trillion. And he has, the, the removal of the motion has given us the breakdown of where the additions went to. <laughs> Senator Sanimusa. Uh, 2024 budget came on the 31st of November. 30th of November. 30th of November, and we had only one month. If I will go by parliamentary standards, we have the right to decide when to pass our budget. But if we have decided to pass a budget, on what parameters did we pass our budget? And if those parameters were given, did this respectful chamber sat down, deliberate on those parameters, agree on those parameters, pass those parameters and approve them? Because there's no way you can make a budget without them. So if anybody will come and say this budget is a default, that means we are all at default from the the first time when we were passing the MTEF. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for yielding the floor to me. I thought when the Chairman of Appropriations spoke, it was as clear as crystals that there was a misunderstanding of the figures. When he came up with the GOEs and all the agencies on first line charge. There is no difference between the figure he reeled out and the figure purported to be padded. I thought with that, that matter would have been rested by Senator Ningi saying that this three point something billion, trillion, uh, trillion was not part of the budgetary provisions printed out for us. That would have settled this matter. We are going forth and back on these issues and coming up with issues of the budget and individual uh, issues concerning what came to our various constituencies. If we want to go into those issues, all of us are culpable. Some senators here, so-called senior senators, got 500 million each. I am a ranking senator, I didn't get. Did I go to the press? I didn't get. Most of you got. And yes, if we want to go into those issues, excuse me, if we want to go into those issues, yes, 
So I think that, I think that, I think that Senator Ningi, Senator Ningi, We must surrender our interests to the interests of this very institution and the institution of the country called Nigeria. To do otherwise is certainly irresponsible. And I make bold to say here that Nigeria is not an island on itself. There are other parliamentary institutions in other countries. And so when something untoward like this begins to happen, I think we must reflect very soberly and get ourselves back on the right tracks. Mr. President, with due respect to our colleague, how many of us has time to go through this budget? How many of us? I have a, some items here in the budget, sir. No, 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 I just want to draw our attention. 36 items ranging to 40, 57 billion naira without location. Let me tell you the last one. You will understand what we are complaining and you will understand our appeal. And Mr. President, sir, you agree with us that most of what happened during the budget, you are. For example, number 36. E RGP 2021 20, 29 20. Senator Kawu, Senator Kawu, please uh, explain something to you. We are trying to remain one Senate. You have not denied the post that you made. Distinguished uh, Senator Olamileko, do you have the post that you made? Can you read it out? No, no, it's important because he's saying he stands by his post. Please, can you I just just uh, number? What I'm expecting from us, please, is to move forward. And how do we move forward? I told Ningi in here that he made a mistake, that he should stand up and apologize to us first, then apologize that, look, this even figure that I'm looking for, three trillion, is here. I'm sorry for the embarrassment I've called. That is what I'm suggesting. Mr. President, for the records, because we are saying Northern Senator, Northern Senator, I am the Secretary of Northern Senators. This data and this information, I am not privy to it, just like almost all Northern Senators. And I think Senator Ningi was clear about that both in your presence and even on this floor. He has not pretended about that. That we don't know what is the issues here. And to me, we said, Mr. President, let's get this information clarified before we embarrass the Senate, the National Assembly, or the country. This is a defining moment for all of us to say, if we're going to have a stable Senate, let us have one. It is not about North and South. It's about our rules. It's about the Constitution of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's about our people who are hungry and deprived. Mr. President, sitting as chair, make no mistake about it. A few people who feel they will not give you more than one year to spend in this chair want to do everything possible before the 13th of June to remove you. Standing up to apologize here, even after he repeated that some people got 100 billion from this, this, this budget, some people got 60 billion. Haba, wow. what, what apology are you expecting? Wow. Let us do the right thing, and I am saying it as part of the leadership of this Senate. I am not bothered. If I got anything here, it is not money put in my pocket. They are constituency projects given to my constituency. And I'm not apologetic about it. Mr. President, please let us go into the prayers and do the right thing. Uh, prayer one. 
Distinguished colleagues, prayer one. Pursuant to order 1B of the Senate Standing Order 2023 as amended, allow immediate deliberations of this matter and take appropriate action deemed fit in the overriding public interest and as a matter of urgent public importance to prevent breakdown of law and order. I think this has been taken. Those in support of prayer one say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have been, that have been taken. Prayer two. Take further necessary steps to correct the wrong impression in public domain of the 2024 budget created by the BBC interview and other national media houses and social media platform by Senator Abdul Ningi and amplified by Senator Suleiman Abdul Abdulaman Kawu through his uh, uh, post on Northern Senators Forum, uh, his Facebook account, and other social media platforms. Those in support of prayer to say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. Prayer three, take any further decision as the Senate deems fit and proper to safeguard the integrity of the 2024 budget, which is pivotal to the revamping of the Nigerian economy. Uh, yes, Senator Jimo. Mr. Senate President, my first prayer is that the Senate should suspend Senator Abu Dinigi uh, for, for an initial period of 12 months, suspend his entitlement and privileges as Senator of the 10th Assembly or 10th Senate, and uh, make him stay away from the National Assembly during the period of suspension. Secondly, the Senate or this Senate should send a note of warning to Senator Suleiman Abdurrahman Kau and make him to apologize for posting decisive statements about the Appropriation Act in his Facebook. I, these are my additional prayers. So, so, I, so, I so move, Mr. Pre, Mr. Senator, I so move, Mr. Senator. Point of order. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion raised by Distinguished Senator Jimo Ibrahim. Order! 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 The motion can be amended, but let it be raised. I would like to amend the prayer as moved by Senator Jimo Ibrahim. I amend that the suspension period be reduced to six months. I so move. Baba. Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues, I stand to move that the Senate reverse to plenary to enable the chair report to progress. I so move. Mr. President, sitting as chair, I second the motion that uh, chairman, the Senate reverse to plenary to enable the chair report progress. I so second. The two colleagues, a motion has been moved and seconded that this Senate do refer to plenary to report progress. Those who are in support of the motion say aye. Those again say there. Yeah, clarification, yes. Uh, no, no, one clarification, uh, Mr. President. Senator uh, Jaribi. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate in the Committee of the Whole considered a matter of urgent public importance on a motion urgent need to address the false allegations against the Senate and the Presidency on the 2024 Appropriation Act by distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi Bauchi Central and resolve as follows. One, that distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi Bauchi Central having posted falsehood through his interview on BBC House Service and other media, B, and is hereby suspended from all activities of the Senate, 
including being found within the prisons of the Senate for the next three months. Two, distinguished Senator Abdurrahman Ismaila Kawu is also hereby cautioned from posting or reposting unverified or falsehood on his Facebook or Northern Senators Forum to avoid a breakdown of law and order. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Yes. Accordingly, the Senate hereby warns distinguished Senator Ismail Akawu from posting or reposting falsehood or items capable of uh, causing division or breakdown of law and order in the country. The Senate hereby places distinguished Senator Abdul Ningi on suspension in respect of his vituperations, falsehood, and unverified report in the in the BBC interview, including other media or, or houses, and is therefore suspended for a period of three months from partaking in events in the Senate or being found in the prisons of the National Assembly for the next three months. Finally, the Senate also extends caution, right? The Senate also in the Committee of the Whole agreed that where the Senate Senator Abdul, uh, Abdul Ningi shows remorse in writing through apology to the Senate that such should be deliberated and decisions should be taken by the Senate if such occurs. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in the Committee of the Whole? Yes. Senate Leader. One of those moments of legislating. We are still on the floor of the Senate. This time it's my minister, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, the FCTA, Nisan Wike. The minister had a session with the senators to brief on state of security in the nation's capital, Abuja. We are asked, better part of the session held behind closed door. Certain details were provided afterwards by the minister and the FCD Police Command Commissioner. This is it. I'm glad that they're all happy with what we have done and what we are going to be doing and the suggestions which they have given to us, which I'm not going to disclose uh, to members of the public. It's just a very, very interactive uh, section. Well, what's important is what FCT should expect from us. More security improved, faster, more infrastructure. You can see what is going on in the in the, in the FCT. It has returned to a construction uh, site, and you can see what has happened in FCT. Now we have our own civil service commission. Now we have our own permanent secretaries, which has never been like that before. There are new things coming up in the FCT, which the residents are very uh, happy. Even the, the, the senators agreed that uh, security has quite improved in FCT. And let me also say, there's no part of this world where criminality has been abated. No. You have heard several times in America where people go to schools and shoot students. So let people don't have that impression that you cannot have one crime or the other. What we're trying to say, being able to limit or reduce the level of uh, insecurity. But if anybody tells you that our society is consigned, you don't have one form of uh, criminality, that is not correct. And we must have to tell ourselves the simple uh, truth. Also, most of the kidnappings to you here sometimes are segmented by people. There are some internal arrangements 
take for example, you have a, a housekeeper in the house, you have a driver who plot to kidnap the child of their master. In that case, what do you want us to, to do? All we can do is to say how the, the person has been kidnapped is being released. But to stop it will be difficult because it's an in-house arrangement where a driver that is involved to go and bring a child from school will mastermind the kidnapping. So these are the things we should know. I'm not saying that we don't have kidnappers. Mind you, two most wanted uh, notorious kidnappers, we have gotten them. And that's why you see the level of kidnapping has uh, reduced. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are not saying that we have gotten to the where we want to be. But we are doing a lot. And people must acknowledge that what used to be is not what we are seeing now. And we continue to say, we continue to do our best by providing the best for our people. That's what we are trying to say. Thank we, you, we cannot give you the assurance that there will be no one form of uh, criminality. Nobody can say that. As far as we are human, we need that. So, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank thank you, sir. This is this is the discussion was uh, how FCT had been secured recently. All of them came to acknowledge that FCT is not secured recently, especially like many of them said there, since my assumption of office. They have seen changes, they have seen, and they, I give it to some of my boys, my colleagues in the other security outfit, because we have been working in synergy to ensure safety. We have taken gone extra miles to ensure safety. And uh, they were able to mention at, at least uh, since one month and there's no kidnapping in FCT. No person can say he has, there's a kidnapping. And uh, we, we pray God for that, for the opportunity. It's because of what we have put on the ground. We have used a lot of intelligence. We have decided to dominate the forest. Most of the kidnappers have been picked. And uh, you saw us recovering ransoms and uh, showing it. So that's where the area is come. Other crimes like one chance. I have said this several times. That there's no law in this country that has established any crime offense to be one chance. No, no law. One chance is just robbery. Since I took over, we treated them because they are robbers. We have to treat them like robbers. And they know that, I said it the first day I took over that, I pity them because they don't know what they're doing. So they don't know what they're doing is robbery. When you kidnap somebody in your vehicle and along the line you confiscate everything and push the person off the road, it's robbery. You obtain those things by force. And when force is applied in obtaining it, it becomes robbery. So there's no law like one chance. And I have said, don't call it one chance where I am, because it is robbery. And we are going to treat such people as well. No matter who is involved, whether man or woman, uh, when you have the tenacity to do the robbery, we have the capacity to deal with you equally without fear of heaven. And that is the truth. So uh, we are happy to have and show security to this level, at this level, and at this time in FCT. Now to the Green Chamber. At resumed plenary on Tuesday, lawmakers received a communication from President Tinubu containing the 2024 statutory budget proposal for the FCTA. The presiding officer, Speaker Tajuddin Abbas, read the letter stating that the proposal was based on FCT revenue and expenditure projection. Now the letter. And the content of the message reads as follows. In line with the provisions of Section 121 and 299 of Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, has prepared the 2024 statutory budget proposal of the FCT, which is forwarded here with for consideration and approval by the National Assembly. The budget proposal has been prepared on the basis of the FCTA's revenue and expenditure forecast and is aligned with the fiscal and developmental policies of the federal government and the renewed hope agenda. In addition, the budget proposal takes into consideration the 2024-2026 economic recovery growth plan as well as key assumptions in the 2024 Appropriation Act. The FCTA is prioritizing improvement in healthcare services, job creation, youth empowerment, and increased productivity in agriculture in order to lift as many citizens as possible out of poverty. 
I have uh, forward the 2024 statutory budget proposal of the FCTA and trust that it will receive the kind consideration as judicious approval of the House of Representatives. Please accept, right honorable speaker, the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely signed, Bola Ametinubu. A hot topic on constant rising costs of cement was on the floor of the House on Wednesday. This was in form of a motion on notice by two lawmakers, Honorables Gaza Jonathan Gwevi and Ademori Kui. The motion titled Arbitrary Increase in the Price of Cement by Manufacturers of Cement in Nigeria was moved by Gwefi and seconded by Honorable Obi. This ignited such an intense debate. Here. Yeah. The House notes that the manufacturers of cement have increased the price of their products by up to 50%, leading to sharp hikes in the cost of building blocks, the cost of building materials and buildings, and consequently, the price of rent in the country. The House also notes that the raw materials for the manufacture of cement, which include and are primarily limestone, silica, aluminum, iron oxide, and gypsum, are all sourced locally and are not affected by the exchange rate volatility. Aware that all the factors of production and elements of the cement production flowchart are all sourced locally and have not changed significantly year on year. The House is concerned that the manufacturers of cement have capitalized on exchange volatility to arbitrarily increase the price of the product whose cost of production has not changed significantly since last year. The House is also concerned that the cement cabal is inflicting hardship on Nigerians as the prices of rent and associated services have increased and cognizant that the increase is a direct affront and sabotage of President Bola Metinibu's administration's effort to bring comfort to the populace and should be resolved immediately. The House therefore notes to maintain the, com mandate the Committees on Solid Minerals Development, Commerce, Industry and Special Duties to in investigate the arbitrary increase in the price of cement by manufacturers of cement in the country and report back to the House within four weeks for further legislative action. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that cement is smuggled to Cameroon through Chad, through Chad, Niger Republic. Mr. Speaker, go to Madagali in Adamawa State. You will see how these cements are produced for the purpose of sustaining Nigerian economy with the support of government-friendly policies that have helped these cement mafias to establish business and make money with the with the with the Nigerian economy, but they turn back to put the economy into shambles. They form themselves into a cluster, milking and taking and due advantage of Nigerians. While we are aware that they are, I don't want to use the word opportunists, but they are something near to that. Why I say so? Because they enjoy so many privileges in the land. Via CVM, they get interventions, they, have, they do obtain waivers on our taxes, and they enjoy forex. Yet, all the materials we are seeking to have cement in Nigeria are gotten right here in Nigeria. So the Irony is why hike in cement price. Mr. President, this is the People's Parliament. This is the 10th Assembly. We will not let this fly. People want to stay on Forbes magazine as the richest Africans, but yet they cannot give any incentive or discount to the Nigerian people. Why are we having this? because we have been tolerating monopoly for too long in this country. Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, this must stop. Mr. Speaker, today 
the price of cement is astronomical. It could be due to factors of production. We don't know. I do not think those guys, it's two ways. Either they are an oligopoly that want to exploit people, or that their hands are tied and they cannot, the, the, the production cost is higher. They, they have to make a profit, so they have to increase cost. Mr. Speaker, because of the seriousness of this matter and how it affects the Nigerians, Nigerians in general, I would propose that we've always had sectoral debates on different issues. We've had security, we've had banking, we've had agriculture. I think cement is also very, very fundamental and critical. We need to hear from them, Mr. Speaker. We need to ask them pertinent questions. Why has the price of cement shot up from 2,000 Naira to 15,000 Naira? I think we owe Nigerians that. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I want this house to press on that we must open the floodgate of importation of cement to this country. You will see the next day they will reduce the entire cost of their production. We need to open the floodgate. When, when the man of Newi was given license to import cement, flint, cement cost came down to the barest minimum. He was frustrated out. Ibeto. And there are so many people who are ready to flood this country and sell cement below 2,000. What my colleague didn't mention in his motion is that even the power, they mine coal. Most of the cement factories are being powered by coal. So every content of coal manufacturing in this country is powered by coal and all the contents are from this country. Why must they be telling us charging spend based on the fluctuation of dollar in this country? It is sad. It is totally sad, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. I urge all of us. And it's also criminal. It is criminal. Some of us who manage to be building certain three, four bedroom to widowers every year, we cannot also afford that anymore. It affects me personally. It pains me that no retired civil servant can boast of a three bedroom in his village. Mr. Speaker, I totally support this motion and to urge these criminals men, men, to Mr. be brought Speaker. to book. Thank men. you. Mr. Speaker, a number of speakers spoke from the point of view of the socialist economy. But this country is operating a free market economy. I'm not defending any... Uh, I hope business. you are not referring to one of the learned members from... Especially my socialist yeah, friend. Uh, uh, you are not talking to people like uh, Abu Bakr Fulatan. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, there is no monopoly in cement industry, in the cement pricing or cement manufacturing in this country. This market was liberalized. These companies were sold to the highest bidder. If people are coming from that direction. These people bid it, bought, improved these companies. And today, Nigeria in Africa, Nigeria is net exporter of cement. Hold on, sir. Hold on. Let's be fair. Let's just be fair. I'm on the side of Nigerians, but then we have to be on the side of investors in the country. This, this, this people, these people recruited or having uh, uh, people working in these factories, over 30,000 people in the cement industry. We must understand the cost of gas None of them is on power. None of them is on power. They produce their power through the gas, and the gas, they bought it according to the international price. Excuse me. Order, please. Order, order, order. <laughs> you have my protection. Please go ahead. 
Go ahead. <laughs> no, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I need to be protected. I need to be protected. Order, please. I need to... Order, order. Order, please. I will not sit down. I will not sit down. I will not sit down. Please. I will not sit down. Order. Order, please. Order. I will not sit down. Order. I will not sit down. I will not sit down. Order. 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 Mr. Speaker, I need to be protected. Order. Order. Order in the house. Order. Order. Order, please. Please. Let's allow the Order, honorable please. member to finish his submission. We should respect any kind of opinion. That is why we are a democracy. We should respect the advice opinions on issues. Please, please and please, let's allow our honorable member to conclude his argument. Please. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, that is the beauty of parliament. The beauty of parliament is people should be heard so that you will reason what they say. I have listened to all the contributions on this floor. Not that I disagree with you, but I want us to look on the other side of the coin. The motion is asking us to bring these people to hear from them. You cannot crucify someone. You cannot shave someone's head in absence. Excuse me. Excuse me. The, the, motion, the, motion, the motion's prayer is saying to investigate, therefore, the arbitrary increase. We are all trying to uh, uh, fertilize ideas how we can look at the issue when we bring them before us. I'm on the side of Nigerians, but I'm saying we should be circumspect when we are talking about an issue that affects the national economy. We should be circumspect. These people are investors. They can withdraw their investment. And then, and then we will end up importing cement on the current international price. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I so submit my contribution. Go ahead with your amendment without discussing it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The manufacturers of uh, reinforcement bars should also be added to those that will be invited by the this one, uh, committees as a uh, I prayed by the mover of the motion to also know what are the factors leading to the arbitral increase in this crisis. I so move. Any second to this? Uh... I rise to second the amendment, ably moved by my senior brother and colleagues. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. So we go ahead and put the question. Those in support of this amendment should say aye. aye. Those against should say nay. Yeah. The nays have it. And uh, somebody is uh, moving for another amendment. Please go ahead, sir. My amendment, Mr. Speaker, is that in 2007, then President Yaradua granted almost 25 manufacturers a license to establish factor of cement manufacturer in Nigeria. That the committee should be mandated to investigate what happened to those company that was giving license to establish factory in Nigeria. For example, Niger, Semukalago, Abiyokute, and so many other states in Nigeria. But up to date, we have not heard anything about those companies that was giving license, that the committee should equally be included to investigate all those companies to find out what happened, why those companies is not working today in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with your leave and the leave of the House, I want us to know that it's not that I don't have confidence in the ability of the committee being led by Honorable Jonathan Gaza, he's a ranking member. But what I'm saying is, from all indication, almost every member has in one way or the other caution to act, particularly the manufacturers, on why the increase. That is why I want to read the amendment. If, it's, if members are comfortable, they can vote for it. If members they are not comfortable, they can reject it. Very good. My amendment is the cement manufacturers should be invited with relevant ministries of solid minerals, industry, trade, and investment during our sectorial debate to answer questions from members of the parliament. 
That is my amendment. Thank you, sir. Any seconder? Honorable this amendment, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. Uh -uh. I will put the question again. And those who have uh, throat infection, please, we have two able doctors here that can give you care immediately. We have Dr. Alima Adaiki eh? <laughs> and Dr. Kumo. So I'll put the question again. Those in support of this amendment, you say aye. Those against, you say nay. Nay. <laughs> leader, leader, do you still want to what I'm making, sir, is that the days of chronic, crude, unrepentant, wicked capitalism, those days are gone. People, the biggest capitalists now have developed a kind of social conscience that enables them to make the profit, like we say in the village, where the rat is chopping your toes in the night. It is blowing some air so that you don't wake up and kill it. In other words, the situation we are describing, we are not saying we don't appreciate the capitalists that are investing in Nigeria. That's not what we are saying. But why they make profits in the billions and trillions, they should also remember that it is the working class that keeps their factories going, that enables them to make this kind of profit. But that should not prevent us from auto-critiquing. In fact, critically analyzing what they are doing. The cement, the big cement producers have not been fair to the ordinary Nigerian people because we are looking at their balance sheets. They, these are people who donate billions to political parties, to politicians. But when it comes to helping ordinary people, the story is different. So I think they should be invited here. But if we want to go by way of the committee, I'm not opposed to that because we will eventually see the report that will come from the committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Thank you, Leader. And I want to believe their prayer did not in any way cancel the already existing prayer. They just added to the prayer. But I am guided by your... It is assumed that it has been cancelled, but you cannot move. I now hereby move that the committee after their appearance, be allowed to undertake a more in-depth investigation into this matter. I so move. Because of its national Any, any second to that of this amendment, you say aye. aye. Those against, you say nay. nay. The eyes have it. A couple of other issues featured on the floor of both chambers, either as motion, bills, and even correspondences. However, this is how far we can go today on the program. Watch all editions of The Maze on our YouTube channel, ASO Radio and Television. Like our page and please do subscribe. Thank you for today and let's meet again Friday next week. God's willing. I am Rosemary.